All right, we're back. Seven twenty nine. Uh, think to, think think about this to yourself. Okay, you're driving to work right now. Uh, either love your job, like your job, or despise your job. I mean, and for the most part, there's three elements of that. Or maybe you're you're your own boss and you don't like your own culture about yourself. Which that's a whole nother show. If you're working at uh, Mesomaya and one of those elements <laughs> happens to be tequila. <laughs> I would imagine you I probably you might like, like your job. job. Yeah. yeah, you like your job. And of course, uh, uh, but, you know, company culture is a big deal. And it, I think, is a major um, factor when considering employment somewhere. I mean, wouldn't you agree? I mean, you want to check out the culture. Yeah, definitely. All right. Our next guest uh, is does just that. Darren Martin. He's a speaker. He's an author. He's a, what's called a culture architect. I love it. Awesome. It's it's it almost sounds like a millennial name for yourself. Yeah, you know, I'm a absolutely. Culture, and, it, and I guess it kind of embraces. Everybody likes it except the architects. They're like, wait, what? You can't call yourself <laughs> yeah. an architect. It's funny. We had a, we had a, a guy that was remod. He's a re, he remodels homes. Yeah. And I mistakenly just said. You're an architect, and he goes, "Oh no, don't say no, that." No, no. Those architect guys get, get all in big trouble. Yeah, yeah, they get sensitive about that. But let's talk about what you do, and I think it's great uh, because you've heard us talk on the air and off the air how important a company's culture is to its employees and to get the best out of them. Absolutely. So culture is king. And what we're finding right now is people are getting to pick where they work more than ever in the history. Right. And uh, what I'm what I'm seeing is I'm out there dealing with a whole lot of different companies is there's a really big difference between the stated culture. How do you know the stated culture of a company? Well, you walk in the front door, it's right there on the wall. They have, oh, this is who we are. This is what we believe. So like you, if they have an awards or proud of themselves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they've got their mission statement and all that gobbledygook that they put hey, up there. Thank you. And then you you go back behind the scenes and you start talking to people and you find out how things are really going and whether people are happy or not. And when you look uh, statistically, there's 29% engagement at your typical U.S. company. I mean, that's a third of the workforce that is actually showing up ready to rock and roll, excited about being at work. You know, I, I, I love what you're talking about, people driving right now. You know, honk if you hate your job. Yeah. There's, there's probably a lot of horns going off <laughs> right now. There's a lot of horns right? going off. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I think in 2015, if you're going to attract the top talent, your company has to be serious about their culture. And you've got to build it in a way that is really getting uh, the people that are going to make your future. And companies like LinkedIn, and you mentioned Netflix. Netflix, huge. Netflix, uh, they've got a great company culture deck online you can go check out. But yeah, one of their policies is, well, a couple of things. We only hire A performers, period. And then because they hire top talent, there's no vacation policy. Hey, we expect you. You're a grown up. You're you're an adult. You're going to do a great job. Uh, if you're not, you're probably not going to be here at the company, right? Uh, and so they don't they don't put parameters around the way people manage their lives. I saw a listing for Craig's list, a for, up in Silicon Valley, a position, and it had everything from vegan in an in house cafeteria that had right. vegan food, right? Uh, a two hundred and fifty dollar a month. A stipend for your phone, a, a, a telecommute. Like in other words, they would pay for all of your internet service at your home. Uh, they had a ton of stuff that I had never even thought of that would be considered a benefit. They had it on there, and it it spoke to me. It's like that is the next the next generation coming up. That's what's important to them. That oh, pets. You can bring a pet to work. Yeah, you know, and and why, daycare. Why not? Why not? I mean, there's a lot of that stuff that we think, and when we get into what I call old manism, you know, we start thinking about, oh, that's not the way we did it back in the day. And, you know, I used to put in my 80 hours hoping to make partner one day in 30 years. I, in fact, I was, at, I was at a big law firm a couple of years ago, and they said, look, we can't keep young attorneys. They're not staying. And I said, because your model is broken. Nobody wants to slave it out for 80 hours a week until 20 years from now, maybe I'll get the gold watch and make partner. Those days are over. The way we think about business is completely changed. And uh, the, mill the millennials are obviously not coming. They're here. And any company that has a uh, love-hate, stronger on the hate, in many cases, relationship with millennials is going to be in trouble. They're in trouble. Okay, so what's the first thing that you do when you come into, if a company calls you in and says, hey, 
I think we've got some problems. What's the first thing you do? I, 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 well, I told this law firm, he said, what are you going to do for our company? I said, well, I'm going to tell you things about your company you don't know. And he says, well, how are you going to do that? And I said, well, I'm going to start by talking to the receptionist that checked me in. Because I guarantee you, she knows a lot more about what's going on behind the scenes than what's actually happening. So, you know, I go in and I, uh, I talk to leadership, obviously, I've kind of figure out what some of their objectives are and what they're looking for. But then I go out and talk to people that are just a cross section, you know, the, the brand a new intern that's been there four weeks has probably already observed some things about the company that are working, things that are not working, and I just do some digging. And then we, you know, we kind of hunker down and say, look, here's the stuff that is, you know, satisfying to people. Here's the stuff that's not satisfying. Uh, interestingly enough, one of the biggest dissatisfiers for people at work is bureaucracy inability to get stuff done. People come to work to work. They really want to be successful. I believe most people, you know, Deming said, nobody goes to work to do a bad job. And when you go to a job where you are just dealing with, you know, hurdle after hurdle, inability after inability to get something uh, meaningful done, then it's it's a pretty frustrating day. Darren Martin joining us. He is a cultural architect now. So when you find out these things, how willing are the... Um, leaders in this company to take on the to accept the fact that they're not doing it right and they have some problems or do they are they are they in denial that's a great great insight Brian. guys are like that are kind of ego and they're like oh everything's fine you yeah. know they yeah. love me well that's not what our research says yeah it's 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 pretty interesting i've got a book coming out actually called the owner company and one of the things i mentioned in the book is uh, don't shoot the messenger <laughs> Because more times than not, I've gone out and I've talked to 100 people, right? 98 people say the same exact thing. This is a problem. This is where we're struggling. And sometimes management leadership is receptive to hearing that, but a lot of times they're not. You have to kind of massage it in there and help them understand it and see it. Because, you know, you're, you're talking about their baby, basically. And nobody wants to be told, hey, your baby's ugly. Or, you know, there's, there's Actually, a... my babies were ugly. They all, they all looked like squirrels when they were born. They all looked like small squirrels. How is that possible, Brian? Look at you. I know. You, yeah. you, you've yeah, got a face made for TV. Yeah. That, that's well, just now, not That's why I'm in radio right now. Uh, so... One of the problems is that they want to get things done. Right. Is money ever an issue? Do they complain about the money, the structure? Money is definitely an issue, but I think with this with this group coming in now, it's not just about the money. I mean, if they can make less money at a company where they feel like the company is doing something significant, something meaningful, is giving back, um, you know, social awareness, all of those things start to play a pretty big factor. It's not just about the money. You can't just buy top talent today. I mean, obviously, money matters. Everybody, if you if you stop paying people, they're probably going to quit coming to work. But for the most part, that's not the, the key determining factor about uh, how successful your company and your culture is. Now, how long does it take for you to do this assessment as far as uh, going in there and talking to everything from the receptionist to the guy who's comes in at night to cleans up the desk. <laughs> Sometimes you can I can get a pretty quick bead, you know, 30 minutes walking in the door, you kind of get an idea of what's going on. Um, you know, I talk about uh, beached whale companies. That's a that's another book come out probably next year. But uh, you know, one of the indicators you might be a beached whale company when I walk around and there's a Dilbert cartoon on every cubicle, every door, you know, mm -hmm. they're posting Dilbert cartoons. That probably means people are trying to say something to you. So sometimes it's really obvious. <laughs> oh, it's broadcast. Funny. That is pretty or, funny. Or every cubicle has the uh, the little cat hanging in there with the kid. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah, kid hanging out. Know, absolutely. You know the culture's in trouble. Yeah. Well, I really I had a friend that took a job at a station in uh, San Francisco, and it was a big market junk for him in television. So he he got there. He lasted three days. He quit because he said the culture was so bad. He goes, nobody smiled, right. nobody talked. And right. he came from a, a market where, a, a small market where everyone got along and it was like a family and you, everyone came to work because they enjoyed their jobs, not because they were making money that had nothing to do with it. They enjoyed their jobs to go to a big market and everybody was miserable. And he said, I can't do it. He quit. He got a lot of flack for that from people in the industry. Like, how could you dare turn down a job like that? Why would you spend the bulk Why of your day you? doing yes. that, right? I, I mean, always said that. Henry Ford back in the day had a no laughing, no jocularity policy. It was that's for after work. Those days are over. 
uh, play is just as much about it. we we ought to be having fun at work. We ought to be having a good time at work, and that and and the you know research shows that people are way more productive when they're having a good time. I agree. Okay, we're going to have some good time in a few minutes. Uh, we, when you, hey, we, can you stick around? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Because uh, we're going to talk. We'll, let's take a quick break, and let's uh, we'll talk to every girl gourmet. I would imagine. The typical day in her office is pretty fun as well, and we'll get... Uh, Probably a different dynamic there. Yeah, and we'll get Darren involved in that conversation, because I want to also learn, uh, can a company be saved if they have a horrible culture? Absolutely. Okay, so there's 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 hope for you. All right, take a quick break. We'll be right back. Yeah. 